you and I know somebody that had a bright future ahead of themselves, but they compromised it because of pursuing immediate gains. They now belong to the dustbin of history or they are used by someone to achieve their goals. Ours is not to laugh at them, but to learn from their experiences and start to integrate long-term thinking in how we do things. My name is Botaki Shalele from Dreams Made Possible. I still continue on this quest of empowering and educating others so that we can build a community of dreamers and people that build the greatest version of themselves. Let's look at this subject of um, long-term success. For me, it's about envisioning the type of future that you want. It's about casting your eye a couple of years down the line and be clear about that which you want. Meaning that you look at the decisions that you make today and the consequences that those decisions will bring into the future. Now, let's also look at what the opposite could be. And uh, the opposite could be short-term thinking. But I would like to emphasize that there's space for short-term thinking. Not everything is going to be long-term. But for contextual understanding of what I'm teaching about today, I would like you to think about short-term thinking in terms of immediate gratification impulsive decision making but even to the extent of making reckless decisions compromising the future that you deserve so that is the distinction that i would like us to look at why is long-term thinking important because the future is guaranteed if you are given life the future is guaranteed and that future is created today Think about it. When you look at many nations, some of them have got 100-year plans, 150-year plans, so that they say, can secure the future of the coming generations. It is only poor and uh, poorly led nations where you find that immediate gratification, impulsive decision making takes away from future generations. But let's bring it at a personal level. Most people that are successful they have at least 10 to 20 year plans to secure the type of future that they want. Will things change in that time frame? Definitely things will change. But it is better to have a plan and adjust it in terms of the changes that are happening rather than to have nothing. And then the changes that are guaranteed to happen out there happen and they hit you unexpected to a point where you cannot even rise up from the challenges that lies bring um, and guarantee to bring uh, from time to time. So let's look at how you can go about to build this and create and cultivate long-term thinking. I believe that everything starts with clarity. If you are not clear about anything, then it's going to be difficult for you to establish long-term thinking. What is it that you want to achieve in the next five, ten years? Once you are clear on that, then you start to challenge your mind to think long-term. But if you don't have that time frame, it becomes difficult. Some of you, I have actually had somebody say, hey, you know, when I go to an interview and they ask me, uh, what, what are my plans for the next five years? I say, guys, I don't even know what I need to do now, um, which might seem as an innocent statement, but you need to know, even if it's not guaranteed that it will happen exactly that way, but you help your mind to start to think differently. And let me give you an example. There's a guy that I used to work with. And um, we had a few conversations and the first conversations that I had with him and him a permanent lift with me. And I, I said to him, but uh, Sam, I always found you here 
you hardly um, uh, uh, tell, tell me anything about how your social life was. Uh, what is it that you're focusing on? And I went specific to him and said, um, because the discussion led us to even talk about cars. I said to him, but why don't you have a car? I mean, you, you're earning well. I don't know all your other challenges, but you're earning well. Why can't you have a car? And he said to me, Mr. Shalele, I honestly can afford a car, but it's a choice that I have made. And here is what is driving my choice. I'm a foreigner in this country. Every three years or five years, I'm not, if not mistaken, my visa is being renewed. And I'm not sure if it will be renewed. So once it is renewed, I take advantage of that opportunity to build my grandmother a house back home. Yes, I've got my countrymen, they own cars, and some of them, they are close to me. And they are faced with the same predicament that I have at home. It is not for me to judge them. But the choice that I'm making is that I'm going to build my grandmother a home so that when the visa is not renewed and it happens that I've got to go home, but at least I must go to a roof. And I found that so powerful that we are all faced with more or less similar predicaments, but our choices are defined by something else. And... What I took out of his story, it was the clarity that he had his, in his mind of that which he wanted to achieve. And that clarity drove him to plan his life accordingly in a way that leads him to actually build the house. And when he showed me the photos, I was struck by what this young man was doing back home. So have clarity of that which you want to achieve so that it can challenge you in terms of the long-term plan that you want to establish. Number two, think about the obstacles to that long uh, uh, goal that you want to achieve in the next five or ten years. And I'm telling you now, if I were to give you a notepad and ask you to write for me some of the obstacles that might come in, uh, uh, that might impede you achieving your goals. Most of you will write anything that is external. You'll tell me about the money. You'll tell me about the people that are not supporting you and anything that is external of you. And they might be real, but if you want to build long-term thinking, sustainable future, think about obstacles that you put in front of yourself. Remember, we spoke about the enemy within. So deal with that enemy within. What are those obstacles that you yourself are going to put in front of you? Are you going to procrastinate? Are you going to uh, do things yourself that are going to scupper the goals that you want to achieve? Think about how you as a person are going to be the obstacles to your own goals. Yes, you might be enticed to look at the outside, but look at how you doubt yourself. Look at the concept of self-handicapping. This is a psychological concept where you as a person put things that are going to derail the achievement of the goal so that you can say to others that, no, 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 it is not me. It is because of one, two, and three. So think about that, the self-handicapping thing putting things in front of you that are going to disturb you or to derail you to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. So you are the main obstacle towards your own goals. So once you are able to deal with yourself, the external obstacles, as the African proverb says, if there's no enemy inside, the enemy outside can do us no harm. So those external ob obstacles about money, they will still exist, but you will approach them with a clear mentality. Your fear, your doubt will not even stop you from thinking of possibilities of how to fund some of your dreams. It will help you to even reach out to other people and find the right peers and the right stakeholders that are going to assist you. And by no means am I saying it's going to be easy. But what I'm saying is start with yourself, remove yourself as an obstacle, because once you remove yourself as an obstacle, 80%, 90% of what you want to achieve is almost within reach. Number three, stay on the narrow path. The reason why most of us do not achieve that long -term, those long-term plans is because 
We want to be part of the masses. You know, uh, walking this journey on, on the narrow, it's a difficult path where you are not easily influenced by what the Joneses are doing, where you are not influenced by what your friend has just done, uh, you know, the car that they have just brought, as I made an example earlier with Sam. But saying, this is my path, I'm going to stay on this path, because I don't know, I really don't know how other people do achieve you know, I can only go and ask them and then get motivation and inspiration from them. But at the end of the day, I'm my own cheerleader. So you've got to stay on that narrow path. And, and, and these things are said every time, but the extent to which we practice them is another question. We know that following the masses is not the answer. But being a minority amongst the majority it is the most powerful that thing, thing that you can do that is going to help you to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Groupthink has led a lot of people in jail. Because without thinking, people just scream. They don't even know where the suggestion came from. And they just run behind the suggestion and the noises. But at the end of the day, they end up being in jail because they were following group uh, voices. So rather listen to your, the voice inside yourself and say, I'm going to stay on the narrow until I achieve my goal. Yes, there might be latest fashion trends. Yes, they might uh, be fr my friends might be changing cars um, one year, two years into driving them. But they live their lives. I'm going to stay in my authentic truth and do me. If you can learn to do you, I'm telling you, you will be on the right path to achieve your long-term goals. Your long-term thinking character will continue to be built and be sharpened for you to get to the goal that you want to reach. Equally related to that is the fourth point, which is about respecting and honoring the process. One of the challenges that we have as individuals is that we want to hasten the outcome. We want to bring the outcome now. It should happen now. And um, we now call it what? Microwave type of thinking. Everything of value goes through a process. How do you build I? You take it through the finesse. It has got to go through that fire for it to melt until it goes through other processes and then it will be turned into I. We equally the same. Whatever that we want into the future needs to go through a process. And that process is called patience, is called consistency, is called um, perseverance until you achieve that goal. You cannot want to say that you want to lose weight. Let me just make that, an exa that example, even though it's not much in the long term. You want to lose weight and then you want to uh, do it in, in, in a week or two. It takes time for you to lose weight, okay? I'm not a specialist in that area, but I know that it takes time. So we try to hasten the process. And that is the first thing. We try to hasten the process. But the second part of it is that we want to avoid the process. Going to the gym requires you waking up. And that's a process that most of us want to jump. How can you see yourself in a gym if you don't wake up? So it becomes cumbersome. It becomes too difficult for you. It becomes arduous for you to just throw those blankets away so that you can wake up and then go to the gym. And for any goal, for any long-term thing that you want to achieve, it takes a process. You've got to get to understand the process that it takes for you to achieve your goals. If your process means that you've got to go and knock three times, four times, five times um, with your investors, that's a process it takes. But sometimes people want to talk to one person and then if they are rejected once, then it's the end of their goals. Long-term thinking um, does not work that way. You've got to respect the process, go through that process. And yes, there will be learnings at the vital points of, of that process. And that's what you need to look at, monitor and see how you approach the next step of the process. But you cannot wish the process away. Anything that surpasses the process 
ne is never sustainable and it comes back to haunt you as an individual the last point is you the person at the center for all of these four things to happen for you to have clarity to understand the obstacles that stands in your way to not be part of the message to understand the process it takes you and what i mean about taking you is the character that you build the growth mindset that you build you can never achieve all these four things without developing a growth mindset and a growth mindset that says i can think of possibilities i believe that i can be able to make things happen i believe that i can conquer my fears because even people that are successful they they still experience fear but the difference is that they conquer those fears for them to be able to achieve the things that they want to achieve they become students of life they become students of themselves so that constantly they build on to sharpen the skills and the strengths that they require to to help them stay on this path of long term thinking there is no way that you can be a long term thinker if you are not a student of your own self know yourself understand your triggers understand your uh, what causes you doubt understand what causes you fear understand what skills you need to sharpen for you to be able to get to the goal that you want unless you do the four and the fifth point you will struggle to become a long term thinker but i want to close on the point that i made earlier about short term thinking and long term thinking and the things that we need to achieve in the long term uh, in the long term so if you you will fail if you think that everything that you're going to do is going to be about long term you need to balance the it does not mean that if you want to buy a car then you must deny yourself to go out with your friends maybe it's about how you do it and, and and i'm saying this very very carefully because uh and i don't want to seem to contradict myself when you do things from a point of desperation your goals are not going to um to see the light of day you are even going to hate the process that you need to go through but if if let's say you are used to go twice three times out with your friends maybe go once a month or once every second month you know the circumstances but the point that i'm trying to drive is to say it does not mean that you need to deny yourself certain things because once you start doing that that is the best way that is the most brilliant way of 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 ensuring that your long term goals will never see the light of day so learn to balance but don't forget what your long term goal is because your short term gratifications should not eat into the future that you want as we end this lesson today i would urge you to really subscribe help us to grow and um, those viewers and subscribers who like our guest on the podcast we haven't stopped that it is only for now that we're going through a certain phase and working in the backgrounds to ensure that we bring you the guests on this platform that are going to assist all of us in growing into the best versions of ourselves until the next episode thank you